resultant of two forces, collinear forces. Collinear we mean parallel. Either both are horizontal or both are vertical or both are oblique, making the same angle with the horizontal. So this is what we mean by collinear forces. Now there are two, con two cases. Either these collinear forces have the same direction or they have opposite directions. Same direction means both are directed to the right, for example, as shown here. Opposite directions, one is to the right and one is to the left, though both are collinear, both are horizontal. So the general rule for finding the resultant of forces is by summing the vectors. So F vector represents the resultant force is equal to F1 vector plus F2 vector. Now, in order to find the magnitude, we have to study it geometrically because they are uh, uh, directed in the same direction, so they add up to each other. Just imagine as if there are two, peop two persons uh, pulling an object here in the same direction, so the resultant will be moving the object to the right in their sense. So they, they help each other, they aid each other. That's why the resultant force will be a greater force. Uh, which is equal to the sum of their magnitudes, F equal F1 plus F2. And here if we um, add the two vectors consecutively, if we represent them consecutively, we can see that they fit into the resultant F vector. However, for, the op for opposite directions, still applying the same rule for the vector, F resultant is F1 vector plus F2 vector. However, to find the magnitude of the resultant force, one is to the left and one to the right, one is going to win over the other. Okay, so the resultant will be another object going to move, for example, to the left side. So the resultant force is actually to the left. It's equal in magnitude to the difference between the two magnitudes and we use absolute value in order to make sure that we obtain a positive value or positive magnitude because the magnitude of all forces is always positive. Okay, when we represent it as a vector or when we express it as vector, we use minus sign. However, as a magnitude, it should always be positive. In this case, we have that F1 is greater than F2 and this is a clear uh, because the length of the vector of F1 is a greater. So that's why and mag for sure being represented by the same scale, this means that F1 magnitude is greater than F2. And thus F1 minus F2 is going to be positive. But anyway, we put absolute value uh, applying the general rule. Now, if these two forces are concurrent, not collinear, they don't have the same, um, let's say, sense or both are not horizontal or not vertical okay so for example if both are perpendicular like f1 here vector and f2 vector are perpendicular forces again the general rule is f vector equal f1 vector plus f2 vector this is for the vectors but if you want to find the magnitude we can see that uh, by going back to the mathematical rules uh, translating f2 vector to appear to be consecutive to f1 vector so now we will have f1 vector plus f2 vector is equal to f vector okay having a right triangle here uh, f is the hypotenuse and f1 and f2 are the legs so applying Pythagorean theorem we can say that the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to radical f1 squared plus f2 squared so the hypotenuse here is the resultant force and the legs A and B are F1 and F2 forces or the magnitudes of F1 and F2 forces. Now, if they are concurrent but not perpendicular, okay, such that the angle between them is different from 90, could be an acute angle, could be an obtuse angle. We have, again, to say that a vector resultant as a vector is F1 vector plus F2 vector and alpha is the angle between the two vectors. However, as a magnitude, we have to apply the cosine rule, which says that it's equal to radical f1 squared plus f2 squared plus f1 times f2 cosine alpha. Okay, again, translating f2, here, the, here we have a palm, translating f2 such that it appears to be consecutive to f1, we get that f1 plus f2 equal f vector. Uh, and applying the cosine rule, we get the magnitude of f. We cannot say Pythagorean because that triangle is no more here a right triangle. And I would like here to note, based on your uh, friend's questions during the session, a new cosine rule appears to be like the Pythagorean, but with some extra term here. Yes, they are right. Um, 
when 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 we have a right when when the two vectors are perpendicular to each other then alpha is equal to 90 and if you try to find cosine cosine 90 on the calculator this is going to be zero so the whole term here will be cancelled because zero times any number is zero so again we'll go back to the pythagorean theorem so actually the cosine rule is the general rule and pythagorean theorem or right triangles are special cases so you're responsible to memorize the rules and apply it in order to find the magnitude of the resultant force now projection of a force in the orthonormal system o i vector j vector any force f making an angle alpha with the x-axis has two components okay also you are learning about it in mathematics o is the origin of the system i is the unit vector for the x-axis j is the unit vector for the y-axis so uh, the magnitude like we draw i within one box here i vector okay and this is the positive sense then and j on one box this is the unit vector for the y-axis so you know that every vector in the xy system uh, has an x component and a y component so let's first check the magnitude then we're going to express it as a vector uh, this is the vector f okay we have to take the tip of it and project it perpendicular to the x-axis in order to find the x-component. So joining the origin of the system to this point, to the orthogonal projection, we obtain fx vector. Doing the same thing but on the y-axis in order to obtain the y-component, joining the origin to the orthogonal projection, we get fy vector. Now given that the angle between f and the x-axis is alpha, in order to find the relation, in order to suppose that we are given f, we are given the magnitude of f and we are given the angle 30. For example, here I took 10 newton and 30 degrees. And we are asked to find the x and the y component of each one of them, of, of sorry, of the force, of this force. So we can apply the cosine rule in the right triangle. You know that cosine alpha is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is fx and hypotenuse is f. Doing a cross multiplication, we get that fx equal f cosine alpha. And similarly, if we do the same thing for uh, finding Fy, you can see here that this is a rectangle and opposite sides in a rectangle are equal. So actually we said that this, this side here represents Fy. So, but it's, it's the one, it's the side opposing alpha. So instead of using cosine, we have to use sine alpha. Because you know that in a right triangle, sine alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And again, our opposite is Fy and the hypotenuse is F. So Fy over F. Okay, doing a cross multiplication, we get that Fy as a magnitude is equal to F sine alpha. If we want to express it as a vector in order to show the direction, in this case, you can see that fx is directed in the positive sense of x. So that's why it's plus and i vector. I have to show that it's in the same sense of i vector and writing here the magnitude. We go similarly fy, so in this case, it's positive for both. However, it could be negative, like if we have the uh, force, for example, uh, let's say in this quadrant, so if this is f, and then we do the projection on the y-axis and on the x-axis, we can see that fx is going to be negative here. It's directed in the negative sense of uh, the system, and fy is still positive. So it depends whether f is directed or belongs to which quadrant. So we have four quadrants here. In the first one, y and x are positive. In the second one, y and y is positive, x negative. Here, x and y negative. Here, uh, x positive, y negative, and so on. So that's why in order to express it as a vector, we need the magnitude and the direction. So we have to express it in terms of the unit vector of the x-axis. x should be expressed in the uh, terms of the i vector and of y in terms of j vector by writing plus or minus to show if in the positive sense or in the negative sense. So in general, we can express any vector by uh, its y and x component. So we can say a vector equal fx component plus fy 
vector or we can say f equal f vector equal fx i vector so fx is the magnitude plus fy j vector then the magnitude is uh, in this case because we are projecting so we are so fx and fy are going to be perpendicular forces whose resultant force is f you can see that fx plus fy is equal to f vector so the magnitude of f is equal to radical fx squared plus fy squared and thus tangent alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent so it's fy over fx